Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and yet another Grand Prix challenge. This weekend we head to Qatar of course for the first of three sprint weekends inside the next four Grand Prix. But today we're doing what we did at Japan. We're going to do another last question mark challenge this time round racing as Lewis Hamilton. And I won't lie, heading into this weekend I'm very, very hyped. Love Qatar inside F123. I genuinely think it might actually be my favourite track in the game so yeah really looking forward to diving on into this one of course if you're new around here please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed as well but yeah let's have a quick look then at the grid of course Max Verstappen would he be starting anywhere else other than pole I'm not really convinced he would there uh, Carlos Sainz joins him on the front row of course the Spaniard been looking very very good in recent real life Grand Prix as well of course Ferrari outscoring Red Bull in the last three Grand Prix Charles Leclerc Sergio Perez make up row two they're ahead of George Russell and Fernando Alonso with the McLarens locking out row four ahead of both Alpines there of Ocon and Gasly rounding out the top ten it's then both Alfa Romeos Yuki Tsunoda ahead of Lance Stroll Albon of course Ricardo not returning in real life but still in the game both Haskars 17th and 18th there with Logan Sargent joining me on the back row of the grid but yeah let me know as well down in the comments where you think we're going to finish this one and a quick shout out as well uh, later on today maybe actually when you're watching this video I'm live over on my Twitch channel we're going to be doing the 10 hours of Petit Le Mans over on iRacing but hopefully as well it's going to give me a little chance of course to do a bit of a live watch along of both the sprint race and sprint qualifying there so yeah there'll be a link down in the description below trying to hit 10k followers over there before the end of the year but yeah let's head trackside then here ready for the Qatar Grand Prix 20 laps ahead of us I'm looking forward to this well, here we are then, trackside for the Qatar Grand Prix. Looking forward to this one, 20 laps ahead of us here this evening. And of course, strategy is going to be essential here. Going to try and go for the alternate strat against the AI and obviously see what we can do. And of course, with the really high downforce setups you have to run around here, you actually need quite a lot of spare fuel as well in the car. So we're going to put just shy of 22 laps in for this 20 lap GP. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions can affect the lifespan of the tyres. As the cars come back towards the grid to line up for the start of the race, each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can, and they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, and failing that within the points. Right, let's do this thing then. On the grid, ready for the Qatar Grand Prix. Five red lights. It's going to be lights out. And away we go. The only car starting this race on a set of the hard compound... Uh, sorry, the medium compound tyres even. So we're going to have a little bit of a disadvantage as we head down in towards Turn 1 and just kind of see what the AI do through these first couple of corners. Of course, expecting a lot of Constantina and up. Uh, but hopefully, of course, you know, Verstappen at the front of the field can't break too far away. Of course, very, very different championship ramifications as we head into this weekend's Qatar Grand Prix. Yeah, Verstappen, of course, very much looking like he's going to take that world championship this weekend. Um, might even obviously do it in the sprint race later on today. But trying to switch back then Magnussen and Logan Sargent off of the first couple of corners. Maybe we can have a look around the outside in through this next hairpin. Like I said, the AI don't tend to run particularly high down for setups around this venue, and it definitely seems to be the way to go there as well. Hulkenberg desperately trying to slot in behind Daniel Ricciardo. We just kind of get left with nowhere to go in the process, but it looks like Sergio Perez as well towards the front of the field has had a bit of a nightmare getaway here, losing quite a few places. So the staff, I'm sure, will be liking that. And he's informed by the team. But yeah, on a set of soft compound tyres and qualifying trim, all of those corners are completely flat out in this Mercedes. So we've got our work cut out, of course, early on in the race. But things like ERS usage, stuff like that, and obviously the straight line speed, we're going to be way down on the AI. As you can see there, we pull alongside the Hulkenberg out of the final corner, but just can't do anything with it as we head back down then in towards turn one we'll try and send it around the outside looks like was that sonoda ghosting a little bit further up the road certainly looked like it ghosting is not enabled in this 
So I don't quite know, maybe it's just a bit of a graphical bug there a little way up the road. But yeah, at least in F123, it's not uncommon actually um, to see a safety car here. I've had some mega Qatar races on this game in the past and obviously we'd love to have another one today of course as we try and have a look around the outside of Hulk. He's really getting his elbows out today. Try and have a look back to the inside as we were alongside him there and Hulkenberg clearly didn't see us in his blind spot. But we will make it through and up then into P17 of this Grand Prix then. So we're still making small progress early on of course it's going to have to be the second half of the race where we aim to really be flying against the AI, of course. As now you can see, we might have a bit of a better showcase of the straight line speed of this thing. Slight blend as you make your way through that beautiful section. This is why Qatar is so much fun there. It's almost getting caught under the rear of Daniel Ricciardo on the exit of the turn. Of course, he's still not making his return to F1 this weekend. Looks to be set to come back in Austin in a few weeks' time there, but... Unfortunately for us, of course, again, nothing, nothing at all down the straights, even against these slower cars. I think we've got the Alpines a little bit further up the road, duking it out as Albon and Sonoda, two other drivers that look to have made decent progress from qualifying, but looks like one of the Ferraris able to keep up with Verstappen early on. Our teammate George Russell up into P3 there, and I can't genuinely remember if I've driven the Mercedes before on this game. Just going to have a look down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, the hairpin. Yeah, I don't actually know if I've driven the Merc before on in F123. Um, feels like I haven't seen, you know, obviously the black Mercedes again from this kind of angle. So, fingers crossed, you know, it's it's a worthy car. Obviously, it's a race, but it does feel very, very planted as well, of course, you know, running realistic cars in this game, as oh, you can just see they're trying to get the run on Lance Stroll. And the AI just use their battery very, very efficiently around this venue, and it can really, really compromise us. You know, and just when you think you might be able to keep alongside someone, and they just about get the cut across on you as we'll try and get a good run. Uh, oh, that was a good job we got the run. As Lance Stroll immediately alongside me there, the engine is going to go bang in that Aston Martin. And could we get a safety car quite early on in this race. Stroll looks to have pulled over on the start-finish straight there, but it was a really good job we pulled out of the toe when we did. Otherwise, we could have been left with no front wing. That was timing, if ever I've seen it. But Sir Lance then, our first casualty here in the Qatar desert evening. Of course, you know, it won't be warm at this time of the night. You know, in the desert, temperatures really do fall off very, very quickly. We try and get a run then on Alex Alban down in towards the next corner. We'll send it once again. Will we get it just about stopped? Yes, we will. There, a little bit of a wobble as we bobble over those sausage curbs. Obviously, plenty of them on the inside of apexes around this venue, but I you know, don't really think too many of them are particularly obstructive unless you make quite a big error on your lap. But yeah, we're making good progress though early on. Uh, up six places then in the opening four laps, so I can't really complain about that. But of course, you know, we need to try and get through all of these backmarker cars as best as possible. You know, you kind of get it fall into a two-stage system inside F123 now, especially obviously since the McLaren buff. Of course, the top five teams, with the exception of Lance Stroll, all kind of break away. And then Alpine kind of gets stuck a little bit further back there, trying to hang on. Some tracks they can, but Qatar... Certainly doesn't seem to be one of those tracks. And yeah, Oscar Piastri gets a lot of boring races as well on this game. Is Yuki Sonoda switching me as we head back down in towards someone? Um, clearly been made aware of the lack of straight line speed I have. So we'll again switch him off of turn one there. Anything you can do, I can do better, my friend. Former teammate Valtteri Bottas. A little bit of a wobble just in front of me. Just not quite able to get the straight line speed up the straights. So they're just trying to be super smooth with the steering there and almost into the back of my former teammate. Down the inside we'll go, and luckily it is Bottas, so he'll kind of jump out of the way there. But yeah, that hairpin, the only truly low speed corner on this lap, so it is a good place to try and make some overtakes, of course, if you can get down the inside of another car. And I honestly had thought about whether we could do it again here on Joe Granu, but he just parks that Alfa Romeo 
exactly where he needs it on the exit of the turn and yeah just starting to wonder whether the um, soft compound tyres are quite providing the grip the AI need as again we'll get underneath Joe but again he will just get the run off the corner but out of position through the penultimate turn so we're going to be side by side to make our way into the final corner never forget for Joe Guan Yu overtook Lewis Hamilton in his first ever Formula 1 Grand Prix last year in Bahrain there. Probably Joe's best claim to fame still in Formula 1 it feels like but again he's going to get me off of the turn and we go all the way around the outside though through turn 1. There's a little bit of camber on the outside there that kind of hugs the car in and we will absolutely complete that move then. So up into P11 points right here so we've actually done a very very good job of closing in on the AI. Of course this is being run on ultimate AI difficulty. So we should be getting a pretty hard challenge from the AIs. Can we switch Esteban up on off the corner? No, there was a slight bit of oversteer there. Got to compromise getting the power down. You can see just why the high downforce setup is the way to go around here. You wouldn't think it when you kind of look at this track. And, you know, it probably isn't the case in real life either. But inside F123, yeah, it works wonders here. So we've got a lot of battery charge, actually. We're trying to get a run up the inside of Ocon into... Oh, come on, man. Esteban Ocon just doing Esteban Ocon things. Mark happy then up into the points. But, yeah, not happy with Esteban Ocon's antics. I mean, we're pretty much fully alongside there. Wheel was definitely in line with his cockpit. But, yeah, clearly... Esteban Ocon just do what Esteban Ocon wants as the end of lap 6 then should be able to get a run on Pierre Gasly as well back in towards that first corner. Okay, Luckily we've got plenty of battery to use. Try and go late on the brakes there. Maybe actually a little bit too late this time round as we make our way oh, through turn 1. Take a little bit of extra curve there. A bit cheeky cheeky on the exit of the corner but we are now through. We are now up then into P9 as we start lap 7 so already one third's distance this afternoon. We're doing alright so far. Well, it hasn't taken us long then to clamber up to the back of Oscar Piastri this afternoon. A little bit of a lock up through the final corner. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see how McLaren get on this weekend. You know, whether they're going to have the pace. I think they could be Red Bull's biggest threat here. So try and get a run to the outside. I think it's going to be long before we see the AI into the pit lane then as we swoop around the outside of Oscar Piastri down at turn one and we are now up at eighth place then of this Grand Prix so doing pretty well looking on the mini map uh, Ferraris and Verstappen just pulling away slightly at the front of the field but second half of the race of course we're going to have a big tyre advantage for a few laps at least so fingers crossed we can get the job done we go I think Verstappen okay, into the pit lane first Ferrari in as well I would assume that Charles Leclerc is Alonso also diving in the problem we've got is George Russell hasn't pit I had undenied about whether a pit stop at the end of lap 10 would be the way to go it looks like the AI then are going to be onto a set of oh, actually split strategies then Carlos Sainz the lead Ferrari but he's gone to a set of hard tyres to see him to the end of the afternoon so clearly Ferrari not thinking the mediums are going to be good or of course it is ferrari so they probably haven't thought about anything on the strategy department there but yeah we're less than two seconds now behind george so we are really closing in as you can just see how much speed i'm able to carry through the corners and i feel like the mclaren and lando norris is starting to slow up the red bull and the mercedes behind him Oh, and George into the pits. Yep, there we go. George Russell into the pit lane then. So we make our way around in the final corners. Cross half distance this afternoon. And we are going to be up to the lead then okay, of the Bahrain Grand... Qatar Grand Prix, sorry. Even I should say, fuel burn hasn't been as bad as I was expecting it to be so far. But we are, yeah, going to box at the end of this one. Making our way then through the final couple of corners. You can see the gap to Verstappen down to just 13 seconds. But yeah, this pit lane, very, very unique challenge in Formula 1. Feels a bit like a street circuit on the way in. But got to be very, very careful and make sure we get that car slowed down nice and tidy, which we have. And of course, Mercedes as well 
on one of the earliest pit boxes on the lane, so got to be a bit careful with that. 2.3 second stop is pretty tidy. It looks like Alonso has got the jump on the uh, Perez, Russell, and Norris scrap. Piastri closing in as well, so I think we're going to be re-emerging around them and the pit lane exit line as well. Very, very late around this venue, but there they go then. Here goes Perez to the inside of Fernando. We're going to slot in just behind George as well. So we have got the jump on Lando Norris through the pit cycle. Um, but we've still got a lot of work to do if we want to win this race. You can already see George Russell struggling for grip at the first couple of corners. I smell blood in the water. As we'll have a look around the outside of my teammate. Just about keep it inside track limits there. And that is us instantly into P6 then. And having the confidence, even as the tyres still warming up there, to try and make these moves. We're not going to have as many cars to get round in the second half of this race. But some of them are certainly going to be more difficult than the first as Fernando Alonso now in that Aston Martin, the wily old fox again, just considering a dive to the inside there, but not convinced it's going to be worth it but I don't really want to be sat behind him up through the fast flowing section as he's almost going to do an knock on on me gives me a little bit more room there as we go purple through that first uh, through that middle sector, but you can see completely flat through the first two and the last one as well in that last sector there. So we are flying at the moment on this set of the soft compound ties. Can we get a run on Checo Perez out of the final corner? We've already completed two overtakes in the space of a lap. Will we be able to make it three there as we've used a lot of battery in the process? Checo, go defensive. Do what you want, mate. We're going to try and send it around the outside there. A little bit of contact actually as Perez missed the apex. But we're through. We're into P4. There are still more cars to get round. Verstappen still up off in the lead. Can we get Hamilton's second win here in Qatar? All over the back of Charlie Boy as we make our way in towards the final sector once again. Are we going to be able to get close enough? Again, I don't really want to be sat behind the AI through here. Oh, Charles, we couldn't back out of it. We could not back out of it there, and he tried to commit to the apex, but he realised... At the last moment, there was a car on the inside there. I don't actually know if there was any contact between us or not, but you can see just how much time we gain still by making sure we're ahead before the corner. He might be able to get a DRS run on me out of the final turn, but you can already see seven tenths back as we make our way out of that final corner. Eight seconds then, the gap to Verstappen with just six laps to go with this Grand Prix. And here comes Charlie Boy flying past me again in towards someone that just tries to position the car. Whoa, in the way through turn one and Charles Leclerc there. Actually getting a big, big wobble. Had to slam on the anchors to catch the slide. And unfortunately, it's really cost us. We'll try and get a run up the hill again then to the outside of yet another car. And again, we'll just about hook it up there. Up now, finally, into P3 properly. But you can see how much time we've lost to Max because of it. We definitely should have a chance at Carlos Sainz here. But five and a half laps to go. Eight and a half seconds. This is not looking reassuring. Oh, we've got very little in the way of battery now as well. Towards the end of this race, so I'm not really going to be able to get much of a run on Carlos Sainz back in towards someone. You can't really see battery usage around this lap just because there aren't that many big braking zones. But, yeah, despite that incident with Charlie Boy, we still took over a second out of max on the rest of that lap. So we need to try and get up to the inside of Carlos Sainz now. Just draining the battery slightly. What is up with the AI today? And their commitment to trying to turn in on Apex is when you're down the inside. I don't quite know, but yeah, four laps to go after this one to try and close up to max. The gap still seven seconds. We're going to need one and three quarter seconds a lap. Well, that lap, we've gone and taken 1.6 seconds out of a Stappen. It is going to be agonisingly close here towards the end of this race if the tyres can keep up. But will it be enough? Verstappen looks at the moment just to be doing enough. I'm not convinced, you know, unless he makes some kind of error. We're going to even get a look here. We just need the DRS. Come on, two laps. We've got enough fuel for a little bit more with the gaps of Verstappen. Still four seconds there, so it's another 1.6 out of him. The only thing I can think of is sometimes... The AI run out of fuel here on the final lap, down towards the line, so they might lose a couple of extra seconds from that if Verstappen hasn't managed it. 
around in the final corner then to start the last lap here of the Qatar Grand Prix and the gap down to 2.2 so it is still coming down so Verstappen there you can see how much again he pulls out down the straight there so I think he's just potentially saved a little bit more of his battery at the moment but like I said the only real chance we've got is if he runs out of fuel down to the start finish line like I said it happens a lot inside F123 and alarming the often occurrence in this game where the AI just don't quite fill up the car enough. That was all running a little bit wide. See our harbour pushing, bring it back the 2021 track limits by the looks of it. But luckily the AI, uh, the FIA, sorry, allowing us just that once. Come on, we just need to be close to Verstappen. You know, it is basically now just can we win it on the off chance here as we make our way through the final couple of corners. We've absolutely had the pace over the Dutchman. Oh, so again, you can just see tyres now starting to lose a little bit of grip. We'll keep draining the battery, but it looks like Verstappen is doing the same in the gap this lap. is not really coming down anymore. You can still see through here. All still completely flat. It's ridiculous how grippy this car can be. So, oh no, just nudge the inside kerb in. But in towards the final corner, it looks like it is going to be Max Verstappen who walks away with the Grand Prix victory, unless he runs out of fuel, which he is. Verstappen's going slowly, come on. It's going to be a drag race to the line. Can we get him? No, we can't. Oh. <laughs> and so as they take the checkered flag, the fans go wild for their champion under the desert night sky here in Qatar. Tell me, Ant. How do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently, and it's clear to see that they've put in the work, and they should be so proud of the victory they secured here. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? Often my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, if that doesn't state where Anthony Davidson's loyalties lie, I don't know what will there. We went from last to almost winning that thing. And yeah, he still says Max Verstappen was his driver of the day there. But yeah, that was a really good fun challenge in the end. Just, you know, always will play in the corner of my mind. Had we saved a tiny bit more battery, had we not made a tiny little mistake here or there, would we have got the run on the Dutchman? But I think, honestly, he slowed down to celebrate with the team um, and then realised how close we were, so I had to put his foot back down there towards the line. But yeah, that's going to do us, though, for this weekend's video, of course. Actually, as well, before I forget, um, there'll be a link down in the description below. Later on today, I'm going to be going live for the Petit Le Mans over on iRacing. Ten hours. We're also going to try and do a little bit of a quali and sprint race watch-along where I get the chance. Yeah, make sure you're there for that. But thank you all so much for watching, and we'll be back very, very soon with more F123 content. A massive thank you to all of my YouTube members and my Patreon supporters for their continued donations to help my work. These things go much further than I think a lot of you ever realise and allow me to continue making content full-time here on YouTube. So if you want to support me from as little as £1 a month and be featured on all of these end clips, either click the join button next to the subscribe or head over to my Patreon. There's a link down in the description.